Hi there, it's been a while now, so some of you might remember that about a year ago I released about installing this wind turbine on the house. Uh, since then I've had a lot of comments of people asking for an update on how it's been. So as you can see it's not on the roof anymore and you've read the title so you probably know what my outcome was gonna be. Um, I'll also address some of the comments that came up. But yeah, I hope you enjoy the video and we will get straight into what went wrong with this thing. So for those of you that don't remember, just over a year ago we installed a 300 watt Vivo wind turbine on our roof. This was just after we set up the solar system, so it's tied straight into the same battery, same inverter. If you haven't seen the video on this, I'd recommend you get subscribed because I'll be doing an update on that in the summer going over how well that went. So obviously as you can see it's not on the house anymore. If you go back, this is on the wall here is where it was installed a couple years ago now. And you were able to make up the bolts where it was fitted. Um, so we ended up taking it down just because it wasn't ended up being worth it. Absolute peak we got out of it was maybe 200 watts and like average power output was probably only 50 watts at the best. And when you compare that to the, the solar here, it's really not that good. And then also if you look where it was mounted on the wall there, uh, that room there is my parents' bedroom. And in the really, really high winds, there was a slight vibration traveling through the wall. Obviously it's all solid brick, so it wasn't a really much of an issue. Um, it was only noticeable in the really high winds. And when you look at the, there's, there's woods here. So the wind from these trees was more than the vibration normally but just the ridiculously low power output combined with that slight annoyance of the vibration meant after about four months, we decided to take it down. So it's been up there for four months, but we've now taken it down because it just wasn't really worth the hassle for us. So from what I saw, most days it wouldn't do anything above a couple tens of watts every now and again. Um, if you got really lucky, you would probably get maybe 60 to 100. Uh, if we do a little bit of napkin math and we say give it a best case scenario and I say if we give it an average of 40 watts for two hours a day, which given uh, how much wind we get here, that's about uh, what I, is a good average for what we saw. Uh, if you put all of that into a calculator, that nets you only about £10 a year based off current UK average rates. So um, of course you will have a different experience, you have different weather and different power bills. Um, but this is just so you can get a rough ballpark. Um, and for us, it wasn't doing much more than £10 a year. Best case scenario. So when you take all of that and consider the amount of power these solar panels have made, so bearing in mind, there's only two panels here and the sun sort of comes up and it goes over there. So we only get about three hours of sun before it comes out from behind that tree and disappears behind the house. So bearing in mind, three hours of sun a day and we live in the UK, so we don't get a lot of sun. And even still, despite that, if you go and look, it's generated, um, here's the stats. This isn't since it was installed because the controller has been reset. Um, so I'll put up about how much, I can't remember off the top of my head, I think it was about 50 pounds since this was installed. Um, but the amount of power this has made is significantly more than what the thing. So you can see the panels are actually generating 2.2 watts now, which again is not a lot, even the money it's generated. So I think it was about 50 quid. Again, not a lot considering this system has been installed for about a year now, but Compared to what the windmill was doing, this is still miles ahead, and this was never meant to be like a save money, generate lots of power. This was supposed to just be a fun project to do. Same with the windmill. So that's why we took it down again, just because compared to just these two panels alone, in fact, this tiny one here would massively outpace it. So we took it down just because it wasn't needed. The power output is not for lack of trying. So this is the controller that came with the windmill. You can see you've got the three phases in, battery out, got a built in charge controller. It claims to be like a low wind speed boost one, um, but considering the size, I had some doubts about that. So I went out and I bought this 150 amp, bit overkill, but I bought this three phase rectifier. So the three phases from the windmill come in here. DC out there, there's some capacitors which I've not got with me, which went on to smooth it. And then I took that and connected it to the proper MPPT charge controller of the solar. So because this one's got actual voltage regulation circuitry in it, like I know that for a fact, and it can actually boost as well as track currents properly. I thought maybe it might get more power at the lower wind speeds rather than using this thing. That didn't help, barely changed the output. It did work, but there was no improvement. So um, had that have worked, I would have got a second one of them and we would have ran it off this. Um, but unfortunately, didn't improve anything there. So at this point, the question then becomes, should you buy one? And I think this is kind of, a, it's dependent on your situation. If you've got big open space, lots of wind, you know it's gonna be doing at least something for the strong majority of the time, 
then it may be if it's something you enjoy if it's if you're if you like doing the off-grid or the the sort of the more eco-friendly energy then by all means um, but if you're looking to power your house with it um, one of this scale is definitely not for you um, you've got to think about the costs as well so at the time of writing this windmill costs about 170 pounds in the uk um, of course that's not the full picture you also need the mounting hardware you need the pole to put it on for us we used a scaffolding pole which was about 70 pounds then of course the brackets and anything else you need um, also you'll need the system that it feeds into of course we use the solar shed um, that's something we already had so it's not a cost i'm going to factor in here but that's something you'll have to consider as well is where is it where is the power that it's producing going for you so once you add all that up that nets you about 300 pounds so you're out about 300 pounds to get a, at least a basic system with one of these windmills I will quickly address a common argument that was brought up in the comments. Uh, a lot of you said that it was too close to the roof of the house and we would be getting turbulence off of that, which would explain why it wasn't tracking properly. Uh, if you go back and watch the old video, that's death. That's something I picked up on there is it wouldn't follow the wind properly. It would seem to spin out quite a lot. Uh, that is entirely something that could happen. It might have been because of turbulence. I lack the knowledge of why that would be. So um, that's something to consider if you get one is to just think carefully about where you're putting it. The reason it was as low as it was for us is we didn't want the pole to be too long, we wanted it to be relatively sturdy even though it was a really strong and like really uh, the, the walls of the pipe were really strong so it wouldn't have ever come down but we were worried a little bit about how it would look as well, we didn't really want it sticking out the top of the house as it was positioned from the front of the house you couldn't really see it much which is you know we want to be relatively nice to the neighbours so that's kind of why it was mounted as it was um, and it's entirely possible that was causing performance issues for us, but I wouldn't know. If you've made it this far in the video, I just wanna say a massive thank you. Uh, we've just passed 1,030 subscribers. Uh, I know a lot of my new subscribers have come from the previous video I made on this windmill. Um, that's not the sort of thing we do here all the time. I know last year was quite quiet for me. I didn't upload a lot. I've got a lot planned. Um, I do a lot of stuff with servers, networking, DIY, RC. Hopefully in the next video I will be making a uh, portable external monitor out of an old laptop display. Um, so if that's something that remotely interests you, please consider subscribing and leaving comments down below. Tell me what it is you want to see, um, what, what, part, what content most interests you. Um, this is the first main video of 2024, so I really hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I'd also just like to quickly mention I now have a documentation website. So if you head over to docs.toywriting10.com, There'll be written guides and tutorials for any videos I make, as well as uh, some of the videos like this. I'll do a written guide as well. So uh, thank you all for watching. I hope to see you in the next video. Um, massive thank you for getting us where we are so far. Uh, hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, thank you. Bye.